Welcome back to the Surplus Fund Ultimate Beginner Guide. In this video, we're gonna be talking about which state you should start with. So look, this is episode number two of this Ultimate Beginner Guide. So it'd be really silly if you haven't seen episode number one to start here because that's just not how numbers work. First of all, it doesn't go two, one, it goes one, two. So if you haven't seen the first episode, go to number one, we'll put a link in the description. In that video, we cover which niche you should start with. In this video, we're gonna talk about what state you should start with. So hopefully you already have your niche selected. If not, go back, watch that first video. Now again, guys, these videos are straight to the point. They're like five to 10 minutes long. And quite frankly, if you can't sit down and watch a five to 10 minute video to help improve your business or even get it started, I, I hate to say this, I don't know if you're gonna have a lot of success. You're gonna be able to at least focus for five, 10 minutes on a video that's gonna help you. So make sure you stay to the end of this video. And again, subscribe, hit the notification bell because once per month, I give out free courses on this channel and you wanna get notified when I do that. And I'm of the first couple people that see the link will get it, so hence why being notified is so important. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's topic, which is which state should you start with? Now, I wanna start this video by saying this. I am not going to give you a very a specific state to start with, and I'm gonna tell you why. I don't know how many views this video is gonna get, but I'm gonna guess it's gonna be at least a couple hundred, it might be a couple thousand, or even 10,000, or even 100,000, right? But if I told all of you guys to go to this one particular state, it's gonna make it more difficult. So I'm not gonna give you a very specific state. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a framework so that you can pick the state like an expert, so that you can pick exactly where you wanna go as if you've already done this business for a long time and know the exact checklist to look for. Okay, and again, that's why it's so important to have your niche selected from video number one, because part of the criteria is, hey, this is good, These, my answers are gonna change depending on which niche I decide to do. Okay, so number one is I will not be giving out an exact state in this video, but I will be giving you an exact checklist that you can use to identify whether a state is good or bad to start in. Now, another common question I get um, from beginners in service funds, or really just anybody in service funds, is what is the best most profitable state to do surplus funds in? And that is a really, really complicated question. And quite frankly, it's really silly. It's kind of a silly, meaningless question. Uh, you can make a lot of money basically from any state, okay? Um, there's not a particular state that's much significantly better in all aspects than another state. Every state has pros and cons. Every state will be good for certain reasons and will be bad for certain reasons. Every state will be good for certain niches and bad for other niches. So you, you really, there's not one state that is just, I have to go to the state and that's it, okay? You have to look at each state as an individual state and say, is this gonna be good for my business overall? And if the answer is yes, then it's a good place to work. And the answer is no, then maybe don't go there. Maybe go to a different state. So that being said, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the checklist of items that we look at when we're identifying a new state or a new market to work in. There's really five main questions that we ask anytime we're going into a new state to figure out whether it's a good state or not. And obviously the answers that we get out of those five questions are gonna tell us whether we wanna work there or not. Question number one is how can you get access to leads and data in that market, market slash state, right? So the biggest key thing here is how can I get leads? Is there an abundance of leads? And you don't just want any leads. You wanna have a abundance of leads that are accurate. Those are the two things that you want. So when you're looking at states and trying to identify states, if the leads and data is kind of sketchy and iffy, throw that state out because that is one of the most important things that you need in this business is access to good quality leads and data in a mass scale, okay? And the reason why I'm not quantifying or giving you an exact number of how many leads you wanna look at is it depends on your business and your goals. I have some students that their goal, Spencer, I wanna get to 10K a month, that's their goal. And that's a great goal, that's you, that's wonderful. There's some people that say, you know what, Spencer, I wanna to get to 100K a month, I wanna build this big company, I wanna do all this and that. Well, for those two different examples, a mass amount of leads is gonna be much different for someone that's looking to get to 100K a month than someone that's looking to get to 10K a month, okay? But the first big question is, will I have enough leads to make a good enough amount of money to where I'm happy, okay? And listen, if your goal is 100K a month, one state probably is not gonna do it for you. But the question then becomes as well, will this one state, is this kind of the biggest chunk I can take right now? You know, if this state's gonna add another three grand a month to, 
whatever we're doing here to my income, hey, maybe that's good, but if your goal is 100K a month, that's not really, you know, that's not really getting you that much closer. But if it can get you to 25, 30K a month, all of a sudden that becomes very significant. So again, the question becomes, what leads and data do I have access to? And is it high quality, is it accurate, and is it of mass abundance? Okay, so that's the first big question we ask whenever we're going into a new state. The second big question that we ask is what are the regulations and laws regarding my niche in this particular state? And this is extremely important. There are some states out there that quite frankly, you cannot operate in depending on your niche. You know, if you're working tax overages, for example, there's a ton of states you just can't operate in. Or you have to operate wildly different than you would if you were working in a different state for the same niche. So it's very important that you understand the regulations and laws regarding your particular niche in that state. And I don't just mean like you understand it from a big picture perspective, but you understand the, the really finite details of it. Okay, and I'm not asking you to be, go get a law degree or something crazy, but you need to understand what exactly you're doing in that state. Because again, literally moving you know, 300 miles to the right could drastically change your business versus if you're 300 miles to the left, you do it one way versus another way, right? So again, regulations and laws, what are the regulations and laws in the state that I want to work in? Is it going to be good for my business? Is it simple and straightforward or is it very complicated and it's just not really gonna work and it seems a little bit sketchy, okay? Um, one of the best things that you can do is actually go through and read the laws yourself. Now listen, I'm not an attorney, okay? I, you know, legal language and all that, listen, I'm not an expert, but by reading the laws yourself, you can get a much better understanding of, hey, this seems like it'll work here, it seems like it won't. And then to counteract that, you also, if you have the available capital to hire an attorney, pay them 100, 200, 300 bucks to read through the same laws that you read through and give you their judgment on whether they think it's going to work or not. That's typically what we do. We even go a step further. We have a third attorney cross-reference with the first attorney, but you, you, know, you probably don't need that, okay? But even just having yourself read through it and then having a attorney look at it is a great first start. And to even add on to that, um, make sure you read all of the laws. So for example, if you're doing mortgage overages, don't just read the laws regarding mortgage overages, read the laws regarding foreclosures in general, because there might be things hidden earlier in the, um, you know, inside of the laws, right? That maybe is not in the mortgage overage section, but might actually affect it. So make sure you read all of it, not just the one little area that you think applies to it, because you could be wrong. And if you're not an attorney, let's be honest, we probably are, okay? So I recommend reading all of it. Okay, now question number three, and this kind of goes off of what we just talked about with the rules and laws and regulations. So depending on your niche, depending on your state, um, the way that you're gonna process deals is gonna be wildly different, okay? For example, in many states, you need, a, you need an attorney to run your mortgage over just through. But in some states, you don't. You just do an assignment contract or you just run it yourself, right? So again, it's the same niche, but it changes. So you really wanna be able to map out the process of what does my deal look like? What is the flow of the deal? So I contact them, they say yes, I send them these contracts, I process it this way, I go through an attorney or I don't, or I do this or I do that, whatever it is, right? And then boom, we, you know, we move on from there, okay? But that's kind of the next biggest question is, what does the processing of the deal look like? Where am I sending the paperwork to? What paperwork am I even using? That's another big important question in this you know, framework of you know, the third kind of biggest question that we ask. Um, and how does it look on paper? Can I, can I visualize the process on paper? Can I draw it out on paper? Can I write out the steps of the process on paper? Because if you can do that, many cases you're gonna be able to seem a lot more professional and when you get your first yes, you're not gonna be stumbling around like, what do I do now? You're gonna already know, you're gonna have a process for it. The fourth question kind of follows up that one almost exactly and it is, how do payouts work in this state for this niche? So, so far we've covered, do you get leads and data? Do, uh, do, do the rules, laws, and regulations make sense for the niche? Like, does it seem like it would be simple and, and fairly easy to work there? Number three is, how does my process work? What do my contracts look like? Um, am I going through an attorney, am I not? Who do I send the paperwork to to get it processed? All of that. The fourth question now is, well, how do the payouts work? Because again, depending on your niche and depending on your state, you know, you, you may get payouts one way for a particular niche, um, and then the same niche in a completely different state, you may get it another way. A great example is with state funds. California, they'll send you the check directly. Most states will send you as the 
uh, representative of the claimant, or depending on the state, there's a bunch of different names, right? There's um, private investigators, there's air finders, there's all these different names for state fund locators. Um, but you representing the claimant, you get paid directly from the state in many states. But then in some states, like New York, I believe, uh, you actually don't get paid directly from the state. The state sends the entire amount to the claimant, and then you have to go and follow up with the claimant and send them an invoice. And so it's really important you understand how that works ahead of time so you're not caught off guard and you, you seem, again, professional, you seem like you know what you're doing and you seem like an expert. That's really the key thing here. We wanna seem like an expert in what we're doing. And then the fifth and final question is, how are you going to market in this niche, in this state? Are you doing cold calls? You know, if you're doing cold calls and you live in Hawaii, and you want to do cold calls in New York, well, there's a massive time difference. I think it's a five or six hour time difference, right? So you got to be calling at certain times of the day that you may be asleep or you may just be doing something else, right? So keep that in mind. Time zones come into effect if you're doing you know, what we call manual marketing. You're doing cold calls, you're sending emails, whatever it is. Um, if you're doing some form of automated marketing, it becomes less important about time zones, but you still want to map out how exactly you are going to do your marketing. What is your marketing plan? You know, a good friend of mine and mentor, Michael Francis, and he's kind of been a business mentor to mine. If you don't know who that is, check out his channel. He's a former mafia guy, um, legit now, but he ran some massive organizations in the mob. And he wrote a business book called uh, I Will Make You an Offer You Can't Refuse. And he actually personally gave it to me. It's it a wonderful book. Highly recommend you guys read it. But in that book, it talks about you have to have a plan. You gotta have a detailed plan when you're getting into any business. Um, you know, anyone out there that started a business successfully knows you can't just come into it and just willy-nilly try to figure things out. That's not how it works. You gotta have a detailed step-by-step -step plan. And that doesn't mean that things won't change along the way, because many times things do change. But it does mean that you have a general outline of what you are planning on doing. And if you need to make some small adjustments because things are not working, you can, but you still have a general outline. Okay, so again, have a marketing plan, understand, hey, I'm gonna be doing it this way in this state, um, and have that plan ahead of time. And think about time zones too. How are my time zones gonna be affected here if I'm living on one side of the country and I'm calling on the other side or vice versa? Okay, so a couple things to keep in mind there. Okay guys, quick summary of today's video for you, the five step checklist. Number one is, can you get accurate, high quality leads and data in abundance in the state you wanna work in? Question number two is, have I looked at the rules, regulations, and laws regarding my niche in that state, and does it seem like it would be a good, simple, and maybe not simple, because sometimes it's complicated, but still a good market to get into, and there's not too many legal issues. Number three is, how are you going to process your deals? What contracts are you gonna use? What is the flow of the deal? Can you write it out on paper? Do you understand it? Question number four is, how are payouts gonna work? Are you getting paid directly from the state if you're doing state funds? Are you getting paid directly from an attorney if you're doing mortgages or taxes? Are you getting paid directly from a courthouse? Who are you getting paid from? How does it work? Um, what is the process like on that side? And then question number five is, what is your marketing plan in the state? How do time zones come into effect? You know, what is your goal as far as contacts per day, leads reached per day? What skip trace sites are you gonna be using? Um, all those questions need to be answered before you jump into a new market. And again, if you need to make adjustments, you can, but those are the five biggest, most important questions we ask before we jump into a new state to close deals. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up and make sure you guys do your homework. At the end of each of these little, you know, ultimate surplus fund beginner guide course videos on YouTube I'm doing, I'm giving you guys homework. So last video was to pick your niche and solidify that. This video is to pick your state. So by the time we have our next course video, which will be next Tuesday, uh, you should have a niche selected and you should have a state and we will jump into the next biggest piece of the puzzle, which I would tell you today, but I want to leave you guys on a cliffhanger. So I'm not going to tell you quite yet, but again, make sure you guys are subscribed, make sure you guys are notified so you guys can see that video as soon as it comes out, if you guys are following along. And also make sure you're, you know, you're getting notifications because quite frankly, we give out free courses once a month and who doesn't want a free course that normal people pay literally hundreds of dollars for. So make sure you guys are subscribed, notified. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next video.